and position of the company for the year. But that is far from being the whole story. There were many new products and other developments in 1947. And I would like you to see some of the highlights, beginning with some of the new buildings and expanded production facilities which became available or neared completion during the year. On the cover of the 1947 annual report appears a picture of the largest and most modern electronics workshop in the world. Electronics Park, Syracuse, New York. Work was begun on this 155-acre establishment, headquarters for the company's electronics department, more than two years ago. And production was started here in July 1947. One building provides seven acres of floor space for the manufacture of radio and television transmitter equipment. Another building provides 10 acres of floor space for the manufacture of radio and television receivers. Two acres of floor space are devoted to the requirements of the engineering department. By December 31st, all departments were nearing full production. On all television transmitter equipment, as well as equipment for radio transmission, and numerous electronics devices. The electric utilities set a new record for electric power output in 1947, which was eight and six tenths percent greater than in 1946. But although they are expanding to meet demands, the growth of both industrial and home use of electricity has been so rapid that expansion, set back by war, has not been able to keep up and the reserve margins of most electrical systems have been sharply reduced. To meet this urgent demand for more power, the electric utilities last year installed some two million kilowatts of new generators and are planning to add five million more in each of the next several years. Steam turbines will drive most of these new generators and General Electric will supply a large share of them along with transformers, cable, switch gear, and the other equipment needed to extend and strengthen America's electric service. For more efficient production of turbines, in line with this program, construction on a new 19-acre turbine plant was begun at the Schenectady Works. By the end of 1947, a large percentage of the steelwork for this huge building had been erected. Upon completion of this structure, all large turbine manufacture will be concentrated under one roof. Expansion of motor building facilities, begun in 1946, was continued during 1947, when the company produced more fractional horsepower motors than in any previous year. In order to take care of the increasing countrywide demand and provide improved distribution in the far west, Construction was begun in September on a new induction motor plant at San Jose, California. A pioneer in the chemical and plastics business since the 90s, this department of General Electric expanded impressively during 1947 as new plants and facilities were made available or neared completion. One of these plants is located at Waterford, New York. This is a plant for the manufacture of silicones, an entirely new form of chemistry whose chief ingredient is sand. Silicones are produced in the form of rubber, oils, greases, and resins which stand up under extreme temperature variations and have many unusual characteristics which promise to have wide commercial applications. During the year, a plant for the production of laminated plastics located at Coshocton, Ohio, was completed and began operations. On June 1st, a third chemical plant went into production at Anaheim, California. The product of its reaction kettles is glyptal alkyd resin, a vehicle to carry the solvent and pigment of paint. During the year, five new General Electric lamp plants were built or went into production, producing various types of lamps for an expanding market. 
Typical of this expansion was the new plant at Mattoon, Illinois, which is one of several plants producing fluorescent lamps. By the end of the year, work was well along on an unusual new laboratory housed in the apparatus works at Pittsfield, Massachusetts. This is an expansion of the old high voltage laboratory and will be the largest man-made lightning center in the world. Here, million volt discharges have been used to study the phenomena of natural lightning and its effects on electrical equipment. From these experiments have come designs for lightning arresters and other special devices to guard the nation's power lines. The enlarged quarters will make possible artificial lightning and alternating voltage tests for power line equipment of much higher voltage ratings, and in addition will provide space for expanded lower voltage work. A much different type of laboratory is the Lighting Institute at Nela Park, Cleveland, headquarters of the General Electric Lamp Department. Entirely remodeled and rededicated in 1946, it came into full use in 1947. During the year, the Institute, devoted to the science of seeing, was host to an average of 200 persons a day. Architects, engineers, school and college executives, and many other specialists who attended conferences or took lighting courses in this working illumination laboratory. Aimed at furthering the science of lighting generally, these courses, which cover virtually all conditions under which artificial lighting is used, are offered free of obligation to qualified specialists. From this experimental sun deck set up at Nela Park, was developed the first commercial solarium installed at the Senator Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. To house facilities for atomic research, construction of a new laboratory was begun in 1947 at a site on the Mohawk River, a few miles from Schenectady, New York. To be known as the Knowles Atomic Power Laboratory, it is being built for the Atomic Energy Commission under the supervision of General Electric and will be operated by the company for the government. By the end of the year, work was also nearing completion on the new $9 million research laboratory, which occupies part of the same 386-acre site. This structure will furnish modern quarters for a part of General Electric's research laboratory the oldest laboratory in American industry devoted to pure research. Two outstanding tools of nuclear research are the Betatron and the Synchrotron. Both electron accelerators, they generate powerful X-rays and are used in atom smashing experiments. A 100 million volt Betatron has been used for several years in the General Electric Laboratory and during the year 1947, a 50 million volt unit was constructed for the National Bureau of Standards. With science working on increasingly faster aircraft and the problems encountered as planes approach the speed of sound, the water table developed in General Electric laboratories during the year provides a valuable research tool that has many advantages over the conventional and more expensive wind tunnel. Based on the fact that when passing around streamlined surfaces, waves in shallow water behave very much as would air waves, the table has a surface of plate glass while a pumping system circulates the water. A small model is placed on the table and observations are made of the water flow around it. Here we can see how air waves would act in relation to this form if it were actually traveling at a speed of 3,000 miles per hour. Among other significant developments of the year was the announcement of a method of forming a permanent bond between ceramics and metals. In this process, the ceramic, after being coated with a special solution, is soldered to the metal with pure silver. This makes possible such innovations as ceramic radio tubes, 
which have especially valuable characteristics for use in connection with the new microwave television relay transmission. During the year, General Electric made strides in this field by placing in operation a four-link microwave relay system between New York City and Schenectady to supply programs for WRGB, General Electric's television station. This installation opens a new era in more economical television transmission. At the same time, an unusual development in the field of electronics was the electronics oven. This makes it possible to take a frozen pre-cooked meal and in 70 seconds bring it out hot, ready for the table. In its present stage of development, due to the high costs involved in manufacturing, it is being used primarily in restaurants. Nevertheless, it may well be the forerunner of an entirely new and easier method of home meal preparation for the future. During 1947, the United States Army made numerous experiments with V-2 rocket flights. And one purpose of these tests was to glean information about conditions in the stratosphere. Here also, General Electric equipment was on the job. A small General Electric telemetering device was carried with the rocket. This electronic observer automatically transmits 28 observations concerning the missile's flight every 1 35th of a second. These are received at the ground station and recorded on film. A new General Electric steering system was also tested. It controls the flight of the rocket in response to command signals given by a device within the missile. One of the most novel engineering achievements of the year was the new differential analyzer delivered to the University of California at Los Angeles. The first such machine to be built on a commercial basis, it follows the design of the one the company built for its own use years ago to be employed in solving involved mathematical problems. It can, for example, determine the current oscillations in motors following transient disturbances. If that doesn't mean much, it might be simpler to say that it can handle in two weeks work that would require a skilled mathematician 17 years to complete. In the meantime, to improve our own production, many machines and devices were engineered but probably none more unusual in operation than the flat iron top polisher designed and installed during the year at the Ontario, California flat iron works. This machine polishes 500 flat iron tops an hour and is one of the reasons why this General Electric plant was able to reach the year end production peak of 60,000 flat irons a week. It is possible that a new era in power supply was heralded when tests were begun at the Schenectady Works on a 4,800 horsepower gas turbine. This power plant is designed to harness superheated gases to drive turbine buckets at rifle bullet velocities of 1,200 feet per second and burns low-grade fuel oil. Studies indicate it may be adapted to the use of pulverized coal. Such new developments in the gas turbine field were possible because of advances made by the company in working out new alloys and metals for aircraft gas turbines and jet-propelled planes. Seven new military planes powered by GE-designed jet engines made their first flights in 1947. The world's airspeed record was set when a Navy Sky Street flashed over the course at Muroc Dry Lake, California, at an average speed of 650 and 6 tenths miles per hour. Work also went forward on improvements to General Electric prop jet turbines, which drive a propeller and at the same time furnish a boost with jet propulsion. Another General Electric contribution to the world of aeronautics was the flight recorder, which is designed to be electrically operated by the plane's instruments and keeps a complete record of each flight. For commercial airlines, the gun sight lamp that the company developed during war was converted into an individual reading lamp. 
To come down to earth, as it were, another 1947 development was the carboloid-tipped jack bit. The special carboloid tips were manufactured by the Carboloid Company of Detroit, a General Electric affiliate. This bit, for use in rock drilling, reduces the cost and time of drilling and far outwears comparable steel bits. For example, in one test, not as much wear is shown in the carboloid bit after drilling nearly 250 feet as in the steel-tipped bit after drilling only two feet. During the year, the carboloid company considerably expanded its facilities for producing this hardest metal made by man. Always a prime supplier of equipment to American industry, General Electric, in 1947, continued to build almost all types of machinery for the generation, transmission, and utilization of electric power. One of the most impressive steam turbine achievements of the year was the 100,000 kilowatt turbine generator set being installed at the Essex station of the Public Service Electric and Gas Company, New Jersey. This is the largest high-speed, high-temperature machine in the world. On the sea, the largest turbine electric units were those installed in the President Cleveland and President Wilson, newest ships of the American President lines. Increased efficiency and more compact design of the turbines allows for increased passenger and cargo carrying space. To help improve the speed and efficiency of the country's rail traffic, General Electric in 1947 continued to build giant diesel electrics for American railroads. At the same time, other diesel electrics were built in conjunction with the American Locomotive Company. And among these was the locomotive of the famous Freedom Train. And during the year, they were delivered to the Great Northern Railroad for use on the line's 73-mile electrified cascade section, the two largest single-cab all-electric locomotives in the world. Each is a mammoth 360-ton, 101-foot unit, developing 5,000 horsepower. Other all-electric giants were built for the Virginian Railway, each bearing a million pounds on the drivers. On the drawing boards of a large car building concern were plans for 750 new cars for the New York subway systems. Each will carry four 100 horsepower motors, especially designed for the job by GE engineers. One motor on each axle to provide New Yorkers with better and smoother subway rides. Probably the most unusual plastics product of the year is the nine-foot boat molded by General Electric's Pittsfield plant for a large boat manufacturer. It is made of glass matting with woven cotton interlayers impregnated with resin and baked under pressure. The plastics boat is unaffected by sun or weather and is virtually unsinkable. In the appliance line, General Electric placed on the market a revolutionary new all-automatic washer, the first to operate completely automatically from the moment it is started until it has completed its 45-minute soaking, washing, rinsing, and drying cycle. The washer is mounted on steel springs and vibration is so reduced that it is not necessary to bolt the machine to the floor. It is appropriate that the company which designed and built the first hermetically sealed refrigeration unit should bring out a smaller and even more efficient unit which is responsible for added feet of usable space in the new GE refrigerator models. The 10 cubic foot cabinet now has the floor dimensions of the average 8. The new 6 cubic foot model, the floor dimensions of the average 4. For further efficiency in preparing meals, the Deluxe Range, designed in 1947, features a built-in six-quart pressure cooker and the new Slimline Calrod cooking unit. 
Its coil is 50% longer, increasing the heating surface and bringing quicker response to temperature regulation. Since seven out of 10 people, again we are relying on statistics, have trouble keeping their feet warm at night in cold weather, an electric foot warmer was announced late in 1947. It is placed between the first sheet and the blanket and maintains the foot of the bed at a warmth of 105 degrees throughout the night. For heating the home in general, two compact new oil-fired warm air furnaces were developed. Either of the two models may be installed in closets, alcoves, or anywhere that as little as two inches of clearance may be obtained. In enlarging facilities for the manufacture of home appliances, Hot Point of Chicago and Milwaukee, a General Electric affiliated company, began an expansion program which will increase the former production capacity of the plant five times. This will make it possible to make 600,000 ranges a year, as well as increased manufacture of other appliances. A plant acquired in Milwaukee during the year is the new headquarters for Hot Point and General Electric water heaters. In the electromedical field, the first X-ray equipped bus for early detection of cancer was delivered in August to the Kentucky Division of the American Cancer Society. In exterior appearance, similar to GE's X-ray buses for tuberculosis control, the equipment includes a combination radiographic fluoroscopic table, equipment for chest radiography, a dark room, and numerous other accessories. Another electromedical device brought out during the year, the muscle stimulator, a boon to those suffering attacks of paralysis. It generates variable frequency waves which have been found effective in stimulating paralyzed muscles and keeping them in condition until nerve regeneration can restore them to normal. Using Schaefer-Langmuir techniques, the Army Signal Corps and Office of Naval Research began conducting many of these experiments. Then, late in the year, Dr. Langmuir announced that he and his co-workers had learned how clouds above freezing temperature could, under certain conditions, be seeded with a small quantity of water and a reaction set up which would cause real rain to fall. For the first time in all history, there is now open to man the possibility of exerting some control over the weather. Probably the most remarkable achievement of the year. We have come to the end of this report on the year 1947, a short period in the life of a company. We look to the future with confidence, firm in the conviction that the long-term trend in the use of electrical products will be upward in spite of any temporary setbacks. We also expect that General Electric will continue to lead the way in supplying better electrical goods whatever the needs may be.